A beautiful evening to you and you're welcome to the news at half past seven. Making the headlines this evening, Gav Nobiano reassures on sustaining effective security infrastructure. Fire outbreak destroys at least one building at Federal Polytechnic, Oko. Nigerians urge to promote unity and harmonious coexistence as Muslim faithful Mark Edel Maloud. On the foreign scene, UNICEF asks world leaders to protect child's rights. My name is Chinima Orangwa, and now the detail of the news. Governor William Biener has been presented with the award he won as the best governor on security architecture in West and Central Africa by the Africa Security Watch. The Deputy Governor Dr. Nkemo Keke made the presentation to the governor during the State Executive Council meeting at the State Esco Chambers. Government House correspondent uh, G.K. Abana tells us more. was presented to the governor at Banjul, Gambia, where the Deputy Governor KK represented the governor. Presenting the award, the Deputy Governor said the award gives credence to the fact that people in the outside world are observant of the governor's efforts in all sectors of the state economy. He explained that the governor of Abia State, Dr. Okeze Ibazo, was the keynote speaker while the state commissioner of police, Mr. Garba Uma, represented the inspector general of police, who also received an award. Once again, it shows what you've been doing on security in our state, that people are seeing it and recognizing it. Um, I believe that this will continue and more awards will keep on coming to show what you've done for the state. Receiving the award, Governor Biano said that it will spur him to do more work. Uh, I've been identified the best governor on security architecture in West Africa and Central Africa. West and Central Africa. You know, so that means uh, the collective effort of all of us here uh, is being recognized outside. So this will spur us to do more. Similarly, an award presentation was made to the governor as the best national firefighter in the country, won by the state government. The state fire chief, Mr. Martin Abole, said that the award, which is the fourth in its series, comes up once every year, saying that Governor Biano's leadership style gave him the opportunity and platform to receive the award. Mr. Abule assured that the state fire service will remain prompt and proactive, pointing out that fighters from other states and beyond come to the state to emulate its firefighting model and appreciated the governor for the approvals he has given to support the agency, pledging to continue projecting the state in a good light by doing more. People nominated me, uh, according to them, the, uh, 100 and, more than 135 that nominated me for this award. I don't know them. So after that, what they said, that the best, the only fire chief that fights fire in the whole country. Our uh, fire service have been there and we've been trying as much as we can to see what we can do, at least not to save the face of the state and the face of the state's government as well. That is why we try as much as we can. So every, any other time, any time we are called upon, morning, afternoon, night, we will always be there. From the ESCO chambers of the government's house, Oka, EGK Abana, ABS News. Governor William Biano has described Dr. Chikwemeka as a fair, a former governor of Anambra State, as a fine gentleman, true progressive role model, and a passionate on Anambra. A goodwill message to Dr. Ezefer on the occasion of his 80th birthday today. Governor Biano said that Anambra State is indeed blessed to have a great son, such as Dr. Ezefer who over the years has invested his time, resources and ideas in making not only Anambra State a better place but Nigeria as a whole. He noted that his government has always enjoyed his wise counsel and friendship while his exemplary life and career continues to inspire generations. According to Gav Nubian, Dr. Ezefer is a great statesman whose background and all he has to cement to achieve greatness have remained source of inspiration to others. He said his administration is pleased that he personifies the true Anambra spirit of hard work, diligence and enterprise. The governor called on the federal government to name a federal university or monument after Dr. Ezefe, who is true hero of democracy. 
Sadly, a session of Federal Polytechnic Okumen campus has been gutted by fire. The fire which started in the early hours of today gutted parts of the school administration office, but it was also rumored that a section of the school exams and record building was also affected, which could not be authoritatively confirmed by the reporter as the students, lecturers and others were barred from entering the school premises by security operators, including the Nigerian police and the school and tech halls personnel. The cause of the inferno could not be ascertained as at the time of filing this report. The inferno disrupted the night class of students who were preparing for their exams. Some students struggled to put the fire out with little success as it raged fiercely and a bus packed around the mass communication building of the school was also affected. Some students who spoke to the ABS attributed the fire to arson. Some lecturers whom the reporter read said they could not authoritatively speak on the matter while the school PRO could not be reached and no official statement on the matter has been released by the school authority as most students express fear on whether their exams will continue. However, no life was lost in the inferno apart from those who sustained minor injuries while running for safety when the fire began, but documents were destroyed in the affected office black. Young writers have been charged to appeal spirit of hard work and discipline to attain enviable heights of great writers. The Commissioner for Basic Info Education, Professor Kate Omenoga, gave the charge during the third edition of 2018 Literary Festival Tagged, remembering and celebrating Chinua Achaba, a literary giant, held at the Kenneth Dike State Library Oka. Correspondent Ogotchuko Keke, who covered the event, filed on this report. Clearing the event opened, Professor Men were represented by the head of the department, Educational Service Department, Ministry of Basic Education, Anambra State. Mrs. Vera Obaro described Chino Achebe as a renowned freedom fighter whose works inspired many into people-oriented activities and proffered solutions to human problems. He recalled that the government of Anambra State, under Willie Obian administration, has instituted role modeling programs for young people who have done the state proud, aimed at encouraging young people of the state to emulate worthy role models. Professor Menoa commended the organizers of the event, Society of Young Nigerian Writers and State Library, for providing unique platform to honor and celebrate the late icon and called for maximum support and encouragement to the organizers. It is a landmark day that brings together at least three of the five and African races from the family figures of the 20th century who come from Anambra. In an hour today, 1930 to 2013, a professor and one of the world's greatest fiction writers of all time and author, the African novel, Tales for the Past. Earlier in a keynote address, a professor of English, Literary and Gender Studies, Nam Daizukiwe University Oka, Mrs. Ife Inwabaz, who narrated Chino Achebe's achievements in the literary world, including Things Fall Apart, No Longer at Ease, There Was a Country, among others, are some of his literary works that reflected hard work, native worship practices, wrestling boats, and condemned colonialism, imperialism, nationalism, and subjugation in Africa. Professor Obaz said that for one to be a great writer, one must accept writing as mission, have passion and profound insight, knowledgeable to read widely, develop analytical and critical mind, possess high sensitivity, uphold the truth, propagate justice and fair play, advising students to read extensively to attain greater height. The overwhelming provision of tributes was clearly an evidence that Chino Achebe was an iconic hero. There were no doubt, exemplifications, there were no doubt exemplifications that this life impacted on humankind. The coordinator of Society of Young Nigerian Writers, Anambra State Chapter, Mr. Izuno Kafo, in his speech, said that the program was organized in the memory of the celebrated literary star as part of effort to perpetuate his legacies and laudable achievements in the literary field of life, as well as to impart on young ones who want to trail his path. And so we died in five years ago, and seem to have been forgotten judgment in their child. Without being a single monument in his name, 
or his memory, even after talking to the state crowd, the evolution, the country, and in fact, the entire African continent and the international community. This would be explain how low our society value intellectuals. Hence, being one of the reasons why we, the exponents, came up to such an initiative as this. In their separate remarks, the managing director and editor in chief, National Light Newspaper, Sir Chuoka Nabife, the senior special assistant to governor on social reorientation, Mrs. Michelle Onubolu, and the author of the last cover, Reverend Farouk Stadema Amakeze, described Achebe as master of knowledge and great intellectual of all ages, stressing that it requires a lot of handwork, sacrifice, and energy for one to be a profound writer, urging young ones to cultivate reading culture and always seek the history in gallery work, as well as ask questions. Among the schools that participated in essay competition, Faith Model Secondary School occurred to first position, St. John of God Secondary School, second position, and Kenedike Secondary School, third position, and prizes were given to them. The event featured lectures, essay competition, unveiling and launching of the third Chino Achebe's Poetry Essay Anthology, and presentation of our award to Professor Obaz in Oka, Ogotchpoke, a report in FBS News. Tony Mars Nigeria Limited is to collaborate with the authorities of the Chukwem Academy Gujuku University in building a legacy project in the institution. The chairman and managing director of the company, Chief Anthony Inukeme, disclosed this shortly after receiving an honorary doctorate in business administration during the ninth convocation ceremonies of the university, which took place at the Wariam campus, Anambra East local government area. We have details from our studio. Chairman and Managing Director of the company, Chief Anthony Enukeme, disclosed this shortly after receiving an honorary doctorate in business administration during the night convocation ceremonies of the university, which took place at the Bariam campus, Anambra East local government area. Chief Enukeme, who was flanked by his wife, Iyo Mary Enukeme, expressed gratitude to the governing council of the university for finding him worthy for such an honor and called on other affluent individuals in the state to identify with the university by building structures and offer other assistance that will make the institution one of the best in the country. Who the university has given to me, the opportunity, the privilege given to me today by awarding the doctorate degree of our business administration. I'm so happy about that. And I've heard what the DC has read, the need of the university, some of them. And I felt, in order to show the appreciation that I'm happy, I will come to the university and meet the vice chancellor. The industrialist used the opportunity to call on youths to aspire to acquire basic education before any business venture, describing education as key to sustainable development. Reading a citation on Chief Enukeme, the university orator Professor Pascal Oguno described him as a quintessential businessman who had a humble beginning. In an interview, the President General of Neni Town Union, Chief Chukwodin Bonu, who said that the award on Chief Enukeme by the university authorities is well deserved, listed his contributions to the growth and development of Neni community, while Mr. Abuchimwazo of the Anambra Broadcasting Service described the recipient as an honest and transparent businessman and called on others to emulate him. So nice to me and to so many people. You can never see him maybe uh, being angry, maybe without any reason. So today's award on him by university is an honor where it's out. One of the station managers of Tonimas Nigeria Limited, Mrs. Ngozi Izwebunam, and the president, Knight of St. John International, Neni Commandry, Satochuku Moma, as well as Chief Joseph Ebnobi, said that Chief Enukeme is using his God's giving wealth in touching lives and prayed for God's continuous blessings on him. <laughs> I will look well, whether that's right, you know, 
The honorary doctorate degree was conferred on Chief Enu Keme by the new Chancellor of the University, Obaru Force, Alade Sanami, the Ewi of Adeikiti in Ekiti State, flanked by the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Gregory Nwakobi. Some management and staff of Tony Mas Nigeria Limited, the Town Union Executive, traditional prime ministers in the state, friends and associates of Chief Enu Keme accompanied him to the event. Nigerians urged to promote unity and harmonious coexistence as Muslim faithful Mac Idel Malid today. These are many more words here after this timeout. Please do join us again. Feel the drama on stage. The energy. 1929 about women's riots. The aftermath. A theatrical explosion. A stage play titled August Meeting. A movement by Choma Onyewe, written by Paul Uwede, directed by Kenneth Ufofo. Live stage play, dates November 29, 2018. Time, 6 p.m. Venue, Marble Ark Hotel, Oka. Admission, 1,000 Naira. For tickets and inquiry, visit www.augustmeeting.com or call 0809-8387-837. You can also get your tickets at Anambra Broadcasting Service, Aroma Junction, Oka. August Meeting, see you there. Two thousand Naira you get to biggest You're welcome back and we sincerely apologize for that poor audio on that message. Muslim Faithful today celebrated the feast of Eid al Malud. The federal government declared today a public holiday. The Minister of Interior, Mr. Abdullaham Dambazel, made this declaration on behalf of the federal government. He also called on Muslim Faithful to align themselves with the Prophet's teaching, which bothers on piety, charity, tolerance, and peaceful coexistence. While calling on all Nigerians, the polls these virtues with a view to overcoming the current national challenges facing the country. Mr. Dambazel assured that the federal government remained committed to the unity of the country and as such will put adequate structures on ground towards ensuring that the forthcoming general elections are credible, free and fair. He wished all Nigerians a joyous and peaceful Eid al Malud celebration. Meanwhile, the Special Assistant to the Governor of Muslim Affairs, Alahaji Garoba Haruna, has called for promotion of peace and unity in the country. Alahaji Haruna, who is the Zurich in Hausa in Okar, said the significance of the day was to mark the birthday of Prophet Muhammad, which comes on the 12th day of Islamic calendar. He stated that his spread brought to the Muslim community the message of peace, love and togetherness, calling on the faithful to maintain harmonious coexistence as they have been given a sense of belonging by Indian Umbra. On the forthcoming election, he reminded all politicians that leadership comes from God and urged them to avoid politics of bitterness and rancor, advising all the Muslim brothers to shun violence, hatred, and uphold the teachings of Muhammad. And now business news. 
The Korea Regulatory Department of the Nigeria Postal Service, NIPIST, has revoked licenses of 30 legal operators in the industry, most of whom had not renewed their licenses. The General Manager, CRD, Dr. Ishiya Musadiwa, made the disclosure at a news conference in Lagos, adding that the licenses were revoked because the operators did not comply with the rules and regulations governing courier services. Defending the department's actions, Dewar said that for the past two years, the CRD of NIPEST has consistently been trying to sanitize the courier industry with its programs such as clamping down of companies. He said courier operators in the country should work with the best standard as courier business is a worldwide business and any form of infringement tells badly on the country, noting that the revocation is also a means of making the environment conducive and worthwhile for the operators to thrive. And now entertainment news. It was a festive mood as members of Odagba Welfare Association danced to old school tunes and cultural music while celebrating their annual New Year Festival and end of the year party. The double event which took place in Oka attracted families, friends and well wishes of the members of the association. Queen Aniwogo now reports. <laughs> As a prelude to the New Year Festival, a retired professor of Igbo language and culture, Professor Godwin Onyekong, gave an elaborate lecture on yam as a staple food and said that the celebration of New Year Festival unites communities across Igbo land. Yeah. The chief patron of the association, Dr. Ernest Ifebi, caught a roasted tuber of yam, signifying the Iwaji part of the celebration. Roasted yam with palm oil, garnished with oil beans, salt, and otazi leaves, a local recipe for roasted yam. We are served to the members and guests who feasted with various drinks of their choice, as well as palm wine. Speaking with the ABS, the chief patron, Dr. Ifebi, countered the belief in some quarters that celebration of New Year is fetish and called on the younger generation to uphold the culture as part of Igbo tradition. Two different things. Uh, first and foremost is AYG. Then uh, the second aspect of today's uh, get-together is uh, the end of year party for Daba Welfare Association. The chairman on the occasion and former managing director of the ABS, Prince Amobi Adrika, said Odawa Welfare Association is an association of like minds who gather to celebrate friendship, which started many years ago, adding that the festival is an annual event of the group. That thing that binds us together is still there. So we are come to celebrate friendship. And then what, what we are doing is an annual event. Also speaking, the senator representing Anambra Central Natural District, Senator Victor Ume, represented by Abuga State Auditor, Mr. Nchekube Donga, while expressing happiness at the occasion, reminded the people that Apuga is a party for the Igbos and called on them to vote for the party in next year elections. If I let them make it and let them do it, I will have the two other people in Nigeria. So, I have never campaigned. In our remarks, a member of the organizing committee, Mrs. Adeze Onyebuchi, explained that the association is a gathering of great minds who come together regularly to have a swell time in a stress-free atmosphere. A friend of the group, Sir Magbenito Ozibo, thanked them for their hospitality, noting that they are people of influence who are among the decision makers in Anambra State and expressed excitement for being part of them. In Oka, Queen Anibogu, ABS News. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, has called on global leaders to commit to doing more to fulfill children's rights as the world marked International World Children's Day. The call came with a global request asking individuals to sign a global online petition asking for children to be 
put back on the agenda. According to UNICEF, there is need to build a world where every child is in school, safe from harm and can fulfill their potential. The UNICEF's representative in Nigeria, Mohamed Fall, said a lot has been achieved, but there is still much to do to ensure that Nigerian children benefit from advances in child rights. As I said, that too many children are being left behind at the moment. He said that Nigeria has the world's highest number of out-of-school children and one of the highest rates of maternal, child and infant mortality on immunization, has said more than 4 million children are unimmunized and tens of millions of Nigerians still do not have access to clean water and proper sanitation, which he said puts children's health at risk, saying that diseases like pneumonia, diarrhea and malaria combined with underlying malnutrition are responsible for most of the deaths among infants and children in Nigeria. Mr. Fall said that Nigeria's burden of stunted growth among children is the second highest in the world, with 16.5 million affected, and the burden of severe acute malnutrition is high, with an estimated 2.6 million children severely acutely malnourished. And on the sport and scene, head coach Thomas Denaby has expressed belief in the Super League Falcons to assume the men of true champions in Uvapa, Zambia and Equatorial Guinea to reach the semi-finals of the ongoing 11 to Women African Cup of Nations finals in Ghana. Eight-time champions Nigeria suffered a shock reverse when losing 0-1 to to South Africa in Cape Coast on Sunday, meaning they must win their two remaining Group B encounters to be sure of a place in the tournament last fall. Denabi said they have ruminated over the defeat and everyone is focused on what they have to do to get to the next stage, noting that it will not be easy but assured that the players have expressed determination to win every match from this stage so that they can progress and pick a ticket to the FIFA World Cup as a first objective. She noted that they are the champions and we have to show that spirit from the next match against the Zambians. Zambia pulled Acts Equatorial Guinea restored to the timetable few days to the tournament after the calf appeal bird overturned on earlier ruling of the disciplinary committee 5 to 1 in the other match of Group B. The Super Falcons have never failed to qualify for the FIFA World Cup since FIFA launched the global finals in 1991. Officials confirmed that players and team officials have now been paid their daily allowances for the camping program in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, prior to the tournament, while money is being sourced to offset the allowances for camping in the legal state. Defeat by South Africa means the Falcons are not entitled to any match bonus yet in Ghana. And that's it on the news. But before we go, a quick reminder that you can follow news and programs from any part of the world by logging on to our website, www.absradiotv.com. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash ABS Radio Television. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And now the recap of our major stories again. Governor Biona has reassured on sustaining effective security infrastructure. Fire outbreak has destroyed at least one building at Federal Polytechnic, Oko. Nigerians have been asked to promote unity and harmonize coexistence as Muslim faithful Mac Edel Malud. And on the foreign scene, we reported that UNICEF has asked world leaders to protect children's rights. And that's it on the news tonight. Many thanks for watching. My name is Chidima Arangwa. Have a wonderful night rest.